Good day, folks. I figured something out. I didn't realize at first that um, the LEDs are actually blinking LEDs, so that explains why they were flashing, okay? So with that said, I decided to take advantage of that for a simple kind of switching to throw the cell, the peg cell, into a kind of state of self-oscillations, taking advantage of its polarity flip when the circuit gets completely through the loop. So I decided with the help of the LED, so what happens here is when the LED turns on and triggers the cell, the cell um, feels that, but right at the moment it uh, turns on the LED, and when the LED turns off it gives that kickback into negative polarity like I demonstrated very early on when you give it a spike, and that negative spike is much more powerful than the uh, trigger which was used to... Uh, that the LED flashed itself, it's got some kind of internal circuitry to do that, but it's a good way to, to, to automatically re-gauge the system. So I decided to try it through a transformer here on the primary side, and I'm going to show you folks that right now, what happens here. So I'm going to put the LED here. So basically, as I explained in the previous videos, I don't have 100 batteries to uh, simulate a high voltage series. So I'm simulating it with fake DC, a really tiny inverter that brings this rectifier up to uh, around uh, 100 volts DC. And it's the DC output of that that's filtered that stacks up in the series with my peg and the DC output here. So in this case, I got to give it an intermittent trigger every 15 seconds or so because this is a normal capacitor. It doesn't keep its charge. You still need a little bit, like I explained, to maintain the electrostatic dipole, but it's still very, very minimal compared to a traditional closed loop circuitry. So we can take advantage of that as long as we have a little bit, like Tom Bearden says, whether it be your 100 cells or simulating it momentarily, with an oscillator, you need a little bit of tiny active power to maintain your um, your dipole separation. So um, taking advantage of that, I'm going to show you what happens when we give it a momentary trigger. Maybe a half a second is enough. And I have the LED on the wrong side, so bear with me. I made a little loop for it, but trying to get it with one hand is... Uh, Okay, so now we have it. So I'm going to trigger it again real quick. There we go. So now you see it blinking. But when it blinks, I got the output here of the secondary. And look what you see here. You get the positive spike and then the cell fights back at much higher amplitudes. So there's your simple over unity right there. But now I'm not doing anything to it. So it eventually settles down because uh, I'm just putting the output on this uh, scope here. I'm not sending it back to feedback. But if I were, you see, it's still doing it. It sustains it pretty long, you know? It wants to keep going. But now I just give it another, there you go. And it's triggering, and these are going at 100 volts, by the way, the negative spike anyways. So you actually see real quick, there are two positive spikes followed by a negative spike. That's the cell's response. So that's the nonlinear ferroelectric response, the additional pulse the cell gives back. So in simple sense, you see it well there, there's the over unity. I could use that energy from this rectifier here, charge a capacitor, and that capacitor can go back to the front here in the series, keeping the potential up. It's really obvious that there's a gain of energy here, so that won't be a problem. It's just a matter of setting it up. See? I don't even need the oscillator. I could use cells. It would even be better if I had the cells, because I wouldn't even have to worry about an intermittent trigger. But the point is, we could keep this going with capacitors this way, because look at that. As I'm talking, you still get the negative you're, you're recycling the, all of the interactions, basically, of the pulse cycle with the help of the LED flashy. See, the cell, you know, with a small trigger even responds. You can hardly see it on the positive, but it still feels it. See that? But of course, here, if, if you'd had series batteries, they wouldn't drain like the capacitor does here. So this would be maintained, folks. You see what I mean? And that's energy generation while it keeps going. That's real AC. Hold on again. I'll trigger it. 
So basically, with the help of a capacitor here charging, going back to the series circuit, once I initiate the trigger, I wouldn't need to do this no more. It would self, especially when you've got more than double, plus you're recovering... See that? You get a strong plus, a strong negative, but then the negative overpowers. Very interesting waveform, but an obvious over unity one. And what you want to use as your trigger, you'll always need a little input, whether it be a hundred dead cells or a small jewel thief even that intermittently gets triggered with some sort of external circuit. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can to demonstrate the effects without really any advanced circuitry and switching and all that. But once you understand what's going on here, the limits are basically endless of what kind of circuitry. You know, the sky is the limit of how complicated and, and high powered you want to make this dependent on the application here. It's all about the electrostatic displacement and how many of those caps you can charge and discharge at the same time. Now, I could recycle the additional energy if I were to put basically another transformer maybe in line with the uh, secondary here and use that additional energy to charge a battery or something. Carefully, you know, to make sure you don't over drain it so you don't kill it, but whatever additional energy, once that's figured out, could be determined and that could be used to power your external load apart from maintaining the electric dipole. So I just wanted to show you that. I'll show it one more time because it's a very, very interesting waveform. So I triggered it there. You see the positive and the... That looks like pretty real AC to me. See what it does there? That's the interesting. So again, just sharing you, maybe not 100% complete. There's a lot of experimentation to be done, but people seem to like these um, intermittent progress report videos of how I'm doing with all of this. And it might shed light for others who are experimenting with these cells as well. So until next time, folks.